Transgenic mice have been used to study cancer for generations. One approach has been to use recombinant viruses to initiate tumors in an organ of interest. This approach was first used to model lung cancer. Specifically, the mice inhaled viruses that transformed epithelial cells within their lungs. These viruses carried an enzyme called recombinase, which activated carcinogenic mutations that were bred into the mouse's genome. In this first model, a mutant form of the KRAS oncogene was activated. This accelerates cell division, forming an early stage tumor. This model of tumor genesis is particularly powerful for the study of cancer evolution because every step of the process can be modeled, from tumor initiation to invasion and metastasis. Unfortunately, engineering a Cree-activatable mutation into a mouse's genome takes years of effort, so modeling genomically diverse tumors was impossible. CRISPR technologies, however, revolutionized our ability to edit genomes. Rather than embedding mutations into our mice, we simply added a gene called a guide RNA to our retroviruses, which directs a programmable gene editing enzyme called Cas9 to modify any gene of interest. By pooling a variety of guide RNAs into different viral capsids, we were able to model more lung tumor genotypes in vivo than the entire field to date. This approach creates different tumor genotypes within the same lung, thereby comparing mutations in the same environment using fewer mice. However, we needed a way to identify each tumor and its genotype. To this end, we added unique DNA barcodes to each virus in our pool that trace initiated tumors and their imparted genotypes. The barcodes also allow us to measure the growth rate of each tumor. To do so, we dissect and homogenize the mouse's lung, isolate the barcodes through PCR amplification, and then count the number of barcodes corresponding to each tumor using next-generation DNA sequencing. This allowed us to quantify tumor growth in an animal model with unprecedented statistical power and precision. Our tumor barcode sequencing approach, which we call TubaSeq, revealed two patterns. First, isogenic tumors growing in the same mouse environment nevertheless exhibit incredible variation in size after only a few months. By tracking thousands of early stage tumors, we developed mathematical rules for tumor growth and its heterogeneity. Second, we found that a mutation's growth effects depend critically on co-occurring mutations. This phenomenon, known as epistasis, makes it difficult to infer the evolutionary forces acting on complex tumor genomes, like lung cancer, from genomic sequencing alone. Fortunately, these pervasive interactions constrain the evolutionary paths available to a tumor, meaning that one day we may be able to forecast tumor evolution in the clinic. For more details, check out our papers. And if you're interested in using TubaSeq for personalized preclinical drug testing, check out these links.